Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our Rookie Balboa run. The run where we're trying to beat legendary Iron Man on the hardest difficulty with permanent dark events with only rookies. And that means four men only. We got so far as to finally go into Operation Furious Cobra, which is uh, the network tower. Um, and first things first. I spent about uh, the, the a good half an hour to really go through each of the items and think through what I want to achieve. Uh, this is the easier mission. The more difficult one is, of course, Water World. Uh, for today, we're going to go in with uh, Jerangs and Aaron that are going to lead this mission. And Bastard, because he writes such interesting novels in the section, we'll get a special... Uh, assignment since we kind of have three there is no advantage of having someone with a bond and not a bond mate so bastard is going to take the last slot to uh, to help us securing the network tower I decided for double blue screen rounds in plenty of uh, mimic beacons to prevent any mistakes that are happening so today we're only doing the network tower and then we're going to uh, immediately rush into the last mission where four rookies are hopefully going to get as far as I possibly can. Let's see how well this is going to play out. Here we go, guys. This is do or die. Very good. So, It's already a hard mission with properly equipped soldiers. But with rookies, this is going to be fun. Well, we got concealment. And we got run and gun, which is fantastic. Every single one of our soldiers got that, to be precise. Might as well move up. And of course, you could imagine the first thing we're trying to do is, damn right, get the high ground. Good, careful, careful. You don't want to trigger yet. The team has entered the first building. Now it's a matter of actually getting on the roof. There's there's an option to get up on the roof here and here. But in true XCOM fashion, you would need to jump through the window in order to do that. Fantastic. Slowly advancing. So, the idea is to uh, keep concealment as long as possible. Is there a door? Well, are you really telling me there is no other way to get on the rooftop other than actually slamming through the window? This is, this is absolutely ridiculous. Well, and that, dear friends, is why we need concealment, because otherwise we would have already pulled two packs. Look, I get it. There is a certain amount of vigilance here. Yeah, 
And as always, we can't just advance. Nothing is ever easy in XCOM. Let's wait until there is only one pack. The other alternative is going on the rooftop up here and basically taking it from there. I think we're going to do exactly that. Stupid first building with no entrance to the roof. This time at least we're going to have another another chance to get to the roof. Carefully advancing, not triggering anything. Andiamo. Andiamo. Okay, look. We still have concealment, so might as well just scout. Good, we know there is another pack over there, fair enough. We leave them be. So... It's not a hundred percent. That's unfortunate. And Bastard does not have blue screen rounds. So the idea here is shoot, kill, and then advance teamwork. Bastard could give us a mimic beacon if needed, but I think we're fine for now. So let's try to do that first. Good, they do have tactical analysis, so... Number one, there's we know that there is a second pack there. Ranks tries to eliminate the second codex. Fantastic shooting. Does that Archon have enough movement to move over? Potentially only has enough to do blazing pinions. And in order to spread out just a tiny bit, Bastard is uh, doing this. Nice little hit. Decent. Very decent. So we got immunity against the first two attacks. And there we go. More enemies are coming. Immunity? No. I think we're just going to mimic peek in this. Reload. First things first. We want the codex down. Very good. That worked out well. Second advanced teamwork. Let's get the Viper down. Ok. 
Okay, as always, try to get as many um, pieces off the field as possible. This guy moves down. I wanted high ground advantage, which is why we threw the Mimic Beacon down there. Why exactly do we have a normal, non-modified pl uh, plasma weapon? Oh boy. See, something was wrong. Not only are we playing it with rookies only, we're playing it without any modifications whatsoever. Great. Bastard, why did you let me down in this difficult time? Alright, we should have immunity. We paid for immunity with intel apparently that's not worth anything good well aaron had uh, taken a bit of a hit we already know that there are Two Archons just standing there waiting for us to get closer. Let's try a bit of an Overwatch trap. Can't believe that I really seriously forgot to put weapons with weapon attachments in here. I'm pretty sure I equipped all of them prior to the mission. Not a hundred percent sure why it didn't register. Well, let's just say I wanted a bit more difficulty. <clears throat> we wanted the challenge. Jarangs moves up. All right, and Aaron moves up. Pull Overwatch. Good, we're continuing to fight against uh, these guys. Archons are moving in and we will use another Mimic Beacon, but this time... Let's do our strike first in the hopes of just dealing a little bit more damage. Fantastic. That's some really solid damage. Dranks. Hopefully finishes the guy. And Bastard does exactly what he uh, has done so far. Which is throwing those nice little mimic beacons out there. Good. Uh, that's a nasty tower, but one that we could deal with. Can we hit both? Yep. 
The answer is yes, we can. Bastard moves up. Let's get that tower. There we go. Nice little protect the fire. Like it. Alright. He's potentially fleeing further. Yep, to the last pack, wherever that is. Ready to rock. Sono di nuovo pronto. Back online. The car permanent covering now. Good lots of overwatch here. Got even more Overwatch, come on. So far we're it's looking good for us. Tranks continues to move up. Wants to push the advantage. Faster just seconds behind him. Jarenks continues to move up. Takes the point position here. We destroyed all of the entrance. Confirmed. Mi muovo all'istante. Moving out. Come get some. Moving to Overwatch. Good. Enemy movement. Continuing to Overwatch. Going in for the kill. Running and gunning. And hacking the workstation, which should end the mission. We're good to go. Status confirmed. We have control of the network. Ooh, closer than I expected, specifically since I messed up uh, the equipment. And there was no need to fight another pack. Good, so whilst we are taking a look at uh, the network tower animation and all of the goodies, uh, let's talk a little bit about the last mission because that's going to come up in two days and I want to make sure that we're ready. So the last mission, Waterworld, will basically contain all three of the Chosen. The way that it works is uh, the first Chosen will um, approach us in the first half of, uh, the, um, of the first map. The second Chosen typically um, comes around the uh, second building or the last building of the first map, right before the exit. And you need to kill both of them in order to even get to the last room. And then in the last room, there will be one of them randomly uh, there. Of course, some of the chosen can make the last room substantially more difficult than others. So there will be a bit of an RNG element to see how, how well we're doing. Sure, uh, we can always have kind of that 
execute shot against uh, the chosen in the last room but the tactic in the last room large and far will be to focus really on the avatars to keep uh, them from spawning and uh, killing them the big problem that we're generally running into is uh, even with the commander's avatar we are going to be completely outmatched and outnumbered so what i will try to do is I'll try to get as much kind of sustainability um, onto uh, onto the characters as, as possible. And we will need to play a sort of high risk game, uh, meaning no uh, no uh, no um, healing kits and really nothing in in particular that could regen uh, regenerate hit points mainly because our equipment slots will be incredibly limited. Another thing to know about the last mission is we are essentially going in against fully upgraded losts. So whatever, um, whatever training they haven't gotten, they would get it. And Operation Leviathan or Leviathan will really be a problem in, in that regard. So let's shortly remove all of uh, them and the idea for the last mission and this was basically the equipment that i have uh, had chosen was to bring uh, two level three uh, bond mated uh, teams roby and divert roby for obvious reasons because he was the character that we were uh, that we were um, investing our training in and uh, diva because it's the bond mate sane and sonar because we had a bit of training on sane uh, and both of them do not have any uh, negative traits so that in itself is already good let's go through the equipment real quick and my thought process uh, let's start with the obvious one uh, where we do have a the uh, berserker suit plus a superior superior advanced uh, uh, advanced uh, assault rifle i will run one blast uh, blaster bomb because it will allow us to for instance hit the chosen even if they are uh, e um, the uh, the avatar even if they are completely at the other side of the map uh, reasonable shredding on top of it and essentially hits wherever we want no uh, no real limitation we will need to save that one until the very last room on the other hand I'm taking blue screen rounds with us in order to deal somewhat with uh, the mechanical uh, units. Matter of fact, in most of uh, the first map of Waterworld, a good first uh, map of Waterworld would be one where we haven't used anything, like literally full um, explosives, full um, mimic beacons, and also no shifting of uh, of actions well whilst in theory that might be the case in reality it's potentially not and specifically the bond abilities will likely be used it would be great if we do have dual strike uh, ready for later um, when we're fighting against the avatars because it allows you to basically do two hits with one so anyways this was uh, sane as a bond mate uh, we're going to go in with uh, sonar here Maximilian Richter, uh, superior scope, superior repeater, just hoping to uh, to insta kill uh, some of them, and he is the one having both of our get out of jail cards. Uh, has the weakest weapon, uh, one that uh, requires a repeater, um, but uh, doesn't have a hair trigger, so I figured might as well give him uh, two uh, two mimic beacons. Then we do have Diva here with a another heavy armor, uh, superior scope, advanced repeater, superior hair trigger, shred storm, uh, which is the, the highest shredding that we could get, and another set of blue screen rounds. Now, where I am unsure, and I'll be honest because I've never been in that situation, is whether or not we want to go in with yet another uh, uh, with another option to shred or if we want to go in with a grappling uh, hook. 
There are a couple of advantages of going in like we're currently doing it. Number one, there is a substantial mobility in, increase. And I'm not only talking about the grappling hook, which per se is just fantastic. I'm also talking about just the sheer movement uh, capability. The armor itself offers another 40 dodge. So we're at 100 dodge, which means with his 13 hit points, it's maybe three to four hits if we play our cards right depending on of course who is hitting um, i have thought about bringing not yet another um blue screen rounds with me but instead going with tail and rounds tail and rounds have a few advantages in my in my perspective one of uh, them would be that they are just um, increasing the crit chance quite a bit and when they're hitting uh, non-mechanical targets that could be really really helpful as a massive hit the other option could be to simply say you know what uh, he's going to be in high ground he needs to be the one that has the best aim and we're going in with 90 aim plus high ground and essentially try to snipe um, whoever we're seeing that could be another uh, another good idea I don't know. I, I'm openly admitting that both of it would have advantages and disadvantages. The other way of playing it could be <clears throat> to give him the the uh, war suit as well and go in with a third shredder, so that we essentially have one shredding per um, per uh, per avatar and don't need to rely on executions but essentially just try to burst them down fast. This here has an advantage with Frostbite and Frostbite really helps us for larger enemies, everything short of a Sectopod or a Gatekeeper uh, could be, uh, could be um, well, at least wound down with uh, Frostbite. So I'm thinking about kind of uh, the Andromedons of this world things that we're not able to kill anyways and i'm wondering if we should just stick with frostbite and yeah uh, essentially just freeze them down right specifically since it's a free action it could be used in the last uh, mission so that's where i'm at uh, with the thought process i would almost go with that uh, team and give it a try it might be a mistake to not have a third uh, blast uh, with me, but the 40 dodge, which are permanent, uh, the ability to take high ground, which we elsewise couldn't, and the ability to also chase uh, avatars will, I think, make up for the one-time use of a massive uh, Shredstorm cannon or a blaster launcher of sorts. So that's really where we are. Now is a great time for you to go into uh, the comments. First of all, hype this up because this year is uh, absolutely fantastic. I love that the run uh, made it all the way to Waterworld. And uh, secondly, I would like to know what you think about the equipment, but also what your prediction is. How far will I make it within Waterworld? Thanks for watching, guys. If you appreciate the content, uh, then leave, uh, leave that comment down below and see you in two days. Bye bye.